In this episode, we're here to talk about Weston McKinney, the man, the myth, the legend. Well, sort of. He just moved to Juventus. What does it mean for them, and what does it mean for Schalke? Stay tuned. Weston McKinney just joined Juventus, and many people, at least in Syria, are wondering, who is Weston McKinney? Sam, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Please pull up any relevant information on Weston McKinney. Weston James Earl McKinney is an American soccer player who plays as a midfielder. He stands 6 foot 1 and weighs 185 pounds. Last season he scored his career best 3 goals and recorded 8 yellows. He also scored a hat-trick versus Cuba last season. He only just turned 22 years old today. Happy birthday, Wes! Weston is, is a true jack of all trade. He has played every position on the pitch except for goaltender. And I'm pretty sure he's played goaltender in practice. But in terms of league play, he's played every position. That's the one downfall, the, one of the major downfalls as a Schalke fan, what I see from Weston McKinney. His development has been hindered because of this. Throughout his tenure, he's played, been forced to play. He's mostly a midfielder. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder. Sometimes plays as a number six or an eight. Uh, at times a 10, but he's played all over the pitch and uh, his managers, because he's so versatile, uh, have put him in wherever they, they needed him because of injuries or what have you. Um, Wesson has been plugged into the systems, playing at center back, midfield and attack, uh, played as striker as well. He's done it all. So what can Juventus fans expect out of him? Weston is a true box-to-box -box midfielder. He's a number eight. His quote is, don't put me in attack or don't put me in defense. Just, just tell me to play out there and I can play in attack and defense. When he was under Domenico Tedesco, he played primarily as a number six, uh, usually in a double pivot next to either Max Meyer or Leon Goretzka, uh, but always played in the sixth six position. Even when, when those players left, he played predominantly number six. Um, while good in that position, he's very, he's very intelligent for his, for his age. Uh, he's, he's got good speed, but he's good, got physicality. He has good athleticism. And he can really thrive in, in many positions, but as a, as a number six, uh, defensive duties, he does a good job. And, and it's an admirable job, but that's not his strength. His strength is using his athleticism to his advantage and going up in attack or you know, going after loose balls, getting in the box. And playing in a sixth position really hinders him from doing that. Uh, playing him in, in either the right back or left back position or center back definitely hinders his, his progression as well. Uh, and playing in the attack or in the wing spots, it doesn't help at, at all. He can do it. He can do a decent job, but uh, that's not where you want him. You want him as a number eight. Uh, he, could, he might be able to play number 10 position, but um, you know, going to Juventus, they got plenty of number 10s, plenty of 10 options that they have at their disposal. So number eight is what he needs. He's an engine room guy. The teams always that he's, when he's been on have always fed off his energy. He is like the, the fire starter of the team. He gets the team mojo going. When the team is down, he can fire them up quickly on the field, uh, whether it's for Schalke, whether it's for the U.S. men's national team. I have no doubt he will do this with Juventus. While Blas Matuidi is a fine player, he doesn't have the rallying spirits that Weston McKinney does. So Weston McKinney has that innate ability to bring a team together, bring them off at times, especially when times get tough. To look at McKinney, you really can't look at just last season. Last season was a little bit unfair to judge him on, mostly because Schalke weren't very good. Uh, but if you look at his entire career, you can see there's definitely a progression with him. The main thing with him, as many Schalke fans will tell you, is his inconsistency. He scores more goals for the U.S. Men's National Team than he did for Schalke. But again, that could be a product of the team that he played for, not necessarily his skill set. We shall see. I'm going to pay very close attention to West when he's at Juventus. Now, I said I said you have to look at his whole career, but you know if we look at last season in particular, um, he really got he was really weak at the beginning of the season and got really strong as the season went on. One of his best games was towards the end of the season. Really, his last four or five games of the season, he was probably the best man of the match of every one of those games. The, the score lines didn't do well for Schalke, but he was a very good player in those games. Uh, in particular, games like Leverkusen, uh, defensively he was pinpoint on there. You know, Leverkusen is a very talented offensive team, and Schalke had to deploy a very defensive system in that game. And Weston McKinney was crucial in that game to stop stopping all the passes, cutting out, making, being positionally sound, being intelligent defensively uh, to keep out, uh, keep Bayer from scoring any kind of goal. So Weston McKinney can do the job defensively, can also do the job off offensively as well. We've seen him, especially with the U.S. men's national team, he gets involved in a lot of the offensive plays, 
And in those, in those teams, he tends to play either a 10 or the 8 uh, position. And the U.S. men's national team has scored many goals while he's been on the pitch. Obviously, it helps to have guys like Pulisic and, and Gio Reyna and some of these other guys. But uh, McKinney definitely stands out when he's with the U.S. men's national team. And I, I believe uh, under Pirlo, under Juventus, he's going he's gonna to step up. He's going to really bring up his game. Uh, to the next level and I, I, I'm excited to see what he can do for Juventus. Now what does that mean for Schalke? I mean the, this deal was a steal for me with Juventus. They did a Juventus style uh, deal on this one. I mean it was a three million dollars up front with a, with a possibility of 18 million and if the, it was all these scenarios well if they make Champions League they have to pay that money or if he plays 60 percent of the games whatever it is it's a steal for Juventus. I think and I said this in another video before that He's really should be, he should really shouldn't be going for like you know 30, 40 million euros, and because Schalke put themselves in a position telling the whole world that they're strapped for money, that really didn't put them in the advantage or the leverage when it comes to negotiating. And most teams that came out with 18 to 21 million euros, and that's kind of how it's been. And no one's been offering more because they know Schalke need the money. They're desperate to to get the money. So uh, with that, Juventus get a steal. They only put up three million dollars up front. Meanwhile, Schalke. What are they doing? I mean, they need money, and they only, they only get three money, three million guaranteed. And you know, he has to make these certain clauses before uh, with Juventus before he even get they even get more money. I mean, what are they doing? They're not reinvesting the team whatsoever. So, you know, from the Shaka perspective, Shaka point of view, this doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, sad to see a player like him go because he is like one of the one of, one of the team players, uh, one of the most passionate people on that team. Um, and one of the better players, he was definitely on, on, on one of the most talented guys on the team and uh, really drove that team and, and really kept the spirit alive. And they're going to miss that. They're, they're not going to have the veteran leadership. And yes, he is a veteran for them because he served for them the last three, three years or so. Um, so they're going to miss him. Uh, so I think it's Juventus' gain and Schalke's loss. And uh, let's see what the season holds. Uh, we'll, I, I'll definitely want to do a recap here after a few months into the season to see how he's doing, how he's progressing. That's, that's my two cents on Weston McKinney going to Juventus, leaving Schalke. What are your thoughts on him? Did you know much about him before? Leave it in the comments. Let me know if you even heard of him before, if you knew about him. Uh, did you know a lot? Did you know a little bit? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. Uh, like, leave, comment. Uh, it's not only subscribe to this page, but subscribe to my, all the other pages. You know, of the Schalke America and Serie A. Sit down. Uh, you're going to get as much information as possible of them. But... Thank you once again for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the, the the moves that both teams made. It's gonna be it's gonna be curious to see who who gets the better end of this deal. I'm thinking it's Juventus. That's just me. We'll catch you in the next episode.